Hello everyone. So today I want to continue our lesson about um, mindful disciplining. This is a second video in a series of three videos. Um, if you saw my first one, that was lesson one that we covered. It's about children really being our mirrors and that if we wanted to change what we see in our children in terms of behavior, the change really needs to come from us as parents. Um, if you haven't seen that video, you can go back ahead and, and, um, and watch it to get some background information. Now today we have a lot of ground to cover. Um, I want to look at the importance of setting up some rules in your home, what kind of rules to set up, and, um, and teaching children consequences that come with it, right? So this is, like I said, this is part of a three-part uh, three series. This is the second part. I will do a third video. Um, and afterwards, people that do want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I will be offering um, a little program at the end. So let's get right into it. I think with what I cover already in the first video and the next two, um, you guys will be able to really make a shift in terms of mindful disciplining in your home, in your families. So today what I want to cover is setting up rules in your home. I think before we even look at that as a parent, I think the question we need to really ask ourselves is where did we really buy into this whole idea of having to discipline a child, right? And I think that it's one that will shock people and shock parents to think that their role is not to discipline children, um, but it's something that we've bought into so, so much and it is evolving with time. Um, it's evolving from having this kind of parenting that was very linear, very authoritative, where parents implement something and children have to obey, and now it's becoming a lot more circular and we're doing this more mindful kind of, um, of teaching our children, of raising our children, but at the same time, um, I feel that a lot of it, it is still very linear and we are just changing the names of things, you know, almost putting a a different you know bow on it and making it think that it's something different but really in fact it's the exact same thing so when we look at disciplining children a lot of times we used to have punishments before and now parents are calling it consequences but at the end of the day it's again it's a punishment with a bow really so um, I think it's very important that if we are going to make that shift into mindfully disciplining children we have to really look at what am I really looking at and what am I truly creating that is mindful in my home to make that shift, to make that true, true shift in, in parenting. So when we look at um, consequences that we want to give our children, what's important to first look at is really to know that our role as parents is not to discipline children. Our role is to teach children. Right? And I don't know where that notion came that by disciplining a child, we will be able to teach them right and wrong. Um, I don't know about you, but when you're in a relationship with someone, when you're in a relationship with your spouse, you don't think about disciplining them. It's a relationship that you're creating with them. And when something goes right or wrong, um, we either we let our, our spouse know about what we like, what we don't like, and things get adjusted and we learn from each other and we grow and evolve with time. So the same thing with children, it's not about disciplining them. I think what's really, really important is to really first create a relationship and that's where the focus needs to be on how do I create a relationship, a healthy, loving relationship with my child, not one of disciplining. That needs to go out the window. Um, and I know a lot of parents will tell me, oh, well, you know, I got spanked as a child and I turned out wonderful. And, you know, I hear that all the time. I mean, I got spanked as a child too. Um, and I have to tell you that I think it comes at the expense of a relationship with that parent. Yes, whenever there's any type of fear involved in the way that we parent a child, either through threats or through, um, through you know, being spanked, um, what happens is that, yeah, it corrects the behavior, but it corrects it through fear. And when it corrects it through fear, the only thing that it creates within a child is resentment towards that parent. And I can tell you personally, it did come at the expense of my relationship with my father. And I think it's only with time that I realized and did a lot of work on my own to see, you know, where 
what effect did that have on me? And personally, it was to become, you know, a perfectionist, to become a people pleaser, not wanting to make mistakes because of the fear of a consequence. Um, and it's only with time that, you know, I did my own, um, my own search and I became my own person and being okay with saying no and being okay with making mistakes. But um, I truly, I, on a personal note, that's how, you know, being spanked or fearing consequences um, affected me personally. And that's exactly what happens to children. It doesn't make them think like, oh, wow, I, now I know what I need to do. Um, I, I shouldn't have done that. I know exactly what I need to do. This is the right behavior. That's not what it does. It makes them fear. It makes them resentful. And they do correct behavior, but they don't correct it for the right reasons. And it comes with, it's almost like it tags on, on top of it all, other issues that you don't really want your child to have. Um, at the end of the day, we want our children to, you know, become the best version of themselves. And that doesn't need to happen through, you know, tagging on more issues that they first have to uncover in order to grow and to become more enlightened and awakened. So... If you can set your mind around the, you know, letting go of disciplining a child and really giving more value to the relationship that you create with your child, that all that will really make that's where the true difference will happen. That's where the true change will happen. And I think that's where that give and take and that um, that beautiful flow starts happening. Um, so it doesn't mean that there are no rules, there are no consequences with your children, not at all. But again, it's to realize that we're here to teach them and it's not at the expense of the relationship that we have with them. So first thing you wanna do is um, establish some rules in your home. So we're gonna go through that. So lesson number one we had learned is that we are mirrors for our children and they are mirrors to us. We're both reflecting off each other and if changes need to happen, it's really within us. Second thing when we move on from that and we realize that we're the ones who have to make the change is to realize, all right, let's set some order in the home and that you'll do through rules. So I like talking about main rules that are what I call set rules and then others where you can be more flexible. So the main rules that you want to have in your home, take note, main thing the rules you want to have in your home is um, it's really rules that have to do with um, with wellness, right? With a, a child's well-being. So first things off, it'll be respect of um, respect to the towards the parents' authority, right? So that includes if a parent says no about something, um, be, having respect towards our towards authority. The second thing we want to think about is um, respect of self right a child needing to respect themselves and that um, goes hand in hand also with um, behaviors that they do towards themselves like safety is one of them right if a child is doing something unsafe right where do we draw the the line and it's something that has a consequence and that we're not this is not up for discussion um, and then the third thing we want to look at is respect for others, right? And I like to add to that also respect for others and respect for things, right? So respecting other people um, and also respecting your stuff. If you don't take care of it, who will, right? So those are the three main rules that I think needs to be set in a home with clear consequences of what happens if we break those rules. And again, it's not because of a punishment, but it's because these are really, really important in order to maintain well-being. Um, for instance, if a child, a teenager, for example, um, wants to dress a certain way, again, this one could be, well, allow them to explore who they are and we could be flexible about it, but if it you know, if they cross the line into dressing a certain way that will attract a certain attention and could be really, really negative and could be um, harmful to them, then no, then you, there's a rule and there's a consequence of not dressing a certain way. So again, you want to really look at, um, is this for my child's well-being? If it's purely for their well-being and their safety, then that kind of um, rule goes into one of the main rules. And then you have what we call flexible rules. Flexible rules can be things that, for example, what time a child goes to bed, um, what they, 
want to eat, what they want to wear, things like that. And again, um, these are rules that because they are flexible, it's something that you really have to create with your child, right? They have to feel like they're a part of this. Not that you're up here and that you're telling them what they need to do all the time and have to do, but really that it's more of a family unit and we decide together. And when you create rules that have flexibility within them, um, and those that don't have any flex flexibility, no leeway, this is the way that it's going to go, then a child is able to really um, master following rules because it's not always that you're like not being flexible, you, you know, my way or the highway, right? So then they find ways to get around it or that you're so flexible that a child doesn't really know, um, you know, what foot to play on, so, to dance on. So again, Consistency is really important. Um, setting consequences, setting boundaries is really, really important. But you as a family need to get clear on what that is. And again, when you have main rules, those are for the whole home. When we start having flexible rules, it, it's individual to the children and it's individual to their age. And I'm not talking just developmental age, but more mental age or maturity or, you know, what kind of child you have. Some kids are more sensitive than others or not. So that's where the flexibility of the rules comes in, right? And also some kids that do have special needs, for example, um, definitely have to have a different type of flexibility in the rules that we set for them as well. So I want to talk about, for example, special needs children, because this is really where the idea came to me about um, having to drop this whole idea of disciplining. I don't usually find parents being stuck in the role of disciplining and being more authoritarian towards children with special needs, with autism, for example, that I work with a lot, right? And it's almost because you think that they're working with a different set of rules, that they wouldn't really necessarily understand why they're being punished, why they're being spanked. So there's a different type of parental approach, I find, a parenting approach, I mean, um, that parents more naturally have to create that relationship with them and that kind of understanding and more of that kind of coaching and teaching. So we have to do the same thing with all children, right? It's not because they understand a little bit more about fear or about consequences that we have to utilize it and become more authoritative towards them. Not at all. It's the same approach. It's a relationship, right? So again, I want to just reiterate that. So like I said, we have our main rules and then we have our flexible rules. And you want to be able to be clear in both main rules and in flexible rules about what the consequences are. The nice thing about the, main, uh, the flexible rules is that you can create those with your children and find, let them find consequences too that they feel is appropriate. So that's another thing that I want us to get into. And it's important. We're gonna talk about consequences and that's a really, really big one. So again, I think that discipline is really us getting out of our own way when it comes to parenting because nature will take care of a lot of stuff on its own. So when it comes to consequences, that's where you want to start thinking that way. You want to think natural consequences. So for example, a child wants to go to bed late at night and stays up very late at night and then the next day is completely exhausted for school that's the consequence. You go to bed late at night, that's what's gonna happen, natural consequence. And again, like I was saying before about the punishment and the consequences that we're wrapping things up and making it sound like it's consequences, but truly it's punishment. If you know, wanna know if you're doing that or not, any time that you are imposing to a child some kind of consequence that naturally wouldn't happen, for example, you don't eat dinner, you don't get to watch TV, has nothing to do with it, has nothing, they have nothing to do with each other. As soon as you're imposing this kind of, um, of consequence, that in itself is a punishment. It's not a consequence. A consequence truly does not need to be affected, right? A consequence is a consequence of life, and that's what we want our child to learn. We want them to learn that, number one, mom and dad are not coming to save you, and number two, there's consequences with everything that we do, whether positive or negative, right? Um, 
So I think a lot of times parents are afraid to see their child fail and they're afraid to allow that to happen, but that needs to happen so that the child can truly learn consequences in life so that they can make adjustments, right? Nature is really one of the greatest teachers. So sometimes you gotta really take a deep breath and learn to take a step back and not enter into the role of saving or into the role of punishing or giving a consequence, right? Sit back a little bit and allow nature to naturally produce a consequence that will be um, a learning experience for your child. So I wanna give you some examples of natural consequences. So for example, a child that doesn't wanna to come to the dinner table or doesn't eat his meal, gets hungry and goes to bed hungry, right? Do this once or twice, they're gonna be there at dinner time. Um, a child doesn't wanna turn off the television when you ask them to. <clears throat> You give them the warning that you have to, you gotta shut it off in five minutes or whatever it is. When you come in that they're not doing it, you just you know shut it off and the natural consequence is no watching television you know, until you can follow that rule. Try it again tomorrow night, right? No matter how much they yell and scream and whatever else, you, there's consequences to the action, right? Um, another one would be um, that a child doesn't want to wear certain things to be to go out to a party or whatever else or brush their hair that's their consequence they're gonna look the way that they look if someone makes a comment or whatever it is they're gonna to have to deal with it themselves you I think the idea really behind it is really that a parent needs to learn to let go of control um, you let go of control so that life can teach them that lesson right Obviously, if it has anything to do with safety or a child's well-being, then you know there's things that you need to impose. If a child wants to be wearing um, shorts and flip-flops and that it's snowing outside, obviously that's not what I'm talking about. You know, if you can just take a step back and allow the consequence of whatever it, that is to happen, let it happen without having to save your child. Um, and then the beauty of it is what a child would end up learning through all this is self-discipline. And truly, this is exactly what we want for our children. When we parent, we don't want to have to be the one that's always on top of our children and helping them make decisions all the time, make decisions for them, or counting on them to make the right decision because you're around. But then when you're not around, they're trying other things, right? You want them to be able to self-parent. That's the whole beauty of about parenting, is to teach a child to be able to self-parent. Right, so that's the thing about discipline. It's not so much discipline that's important. Self-discipline is important, right? The negative connotation of disciplining, it sounds so rough and authoritarian, but at the same time, when you look at self-discipline, that's what's beautiful. That's what's important for a person to have. You have to have the discipline if you're getting up to go to work in the morning or starting a business, um, everything that you have to do, right? Or have a family. All these things take a lot of effort and take a lot of commitment and that takes self-discipline. And that's what we really want in terms of discipline for our children. Not the kind that will make them be um, compliant, right? Um, I have a lot of parents that tell me all the time, you know, that their kids are not following rules and everything else. And I always say, look at the big picture. You know, always look at the big picture because there's some kids that have some such beautiful personalities, you know, um, especially when I have children, for example, that have ADD or ADHD and um, they're a little bit all over the place, always challenging rules and things like that. And, you know, at the end of the day, we want our children to become leaders. We want our children to be trailblazers. We don't really want our children to grow up to be conformists and not question and just follow everyone, right? We don't want that for them. So why are we not allowing them to practice that at home? Um, again, look at the big picture. It's really about helping them channel that energy. We need to channel, we need to help them mold. Um, we need to help them shape behavior. So the takeaway message is this, discipline out the window and shaping behavior comes in. Creating a relationship comes in. That's where change happens, by just creating that flow with your child, right? And that openness and that space 
to allow them to be themselves and to try and to make mistakes, but that you're there to teach them, right? We don't have a rule book when they come to the world. They certainly don't have a rule book when they came to this world, right? So I think it's about being patient enough to really change, to, to really help them shape that behavior um, rather than helping them conform and, and, and imposing on them certain things. So this is the second video in um, the series of three videos. There's one more coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like it and share. Um, and then in our next video, you will have the opportunity to sign up um, if you'd like for some kind of parenting course that I will be implementing. So um, I'll see you then.